homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today it's time to get to pruning. Now, I've got 13 or 14 uh, trees on the property that need to be pruned. And uh, I'm going to start off with a fruit tree. Now, let me preface this. I'm not an arborist. Uh, I've never had a class on how to trim a tree. Uh, I was taught by my grandfather and my father how to do this. And uh, this is how I learned to trim a fruit tree. Now, some would tell you that there's all these things you have to take into account in order to trim a fruit tree properly. Well, I've trimmed all kinds of trees. And you can go check our blog and it talks about some of the trees I've trimmed. I have trimmed a whole bunch of trees over the years. And I've never had one that didn't, the next year or so, be prolific with fruit. So you've got to trim your trees if you want to have fruit. It's just the way it is. Now the tools that you need. You need a set of hand lockers. I, I buy cheap ones because I lose them, I break them, I use them for stuff that it's not made for. Okay, I'll, I'll cut a PVC pipe just as quick as I'll cut a tree limb with this. Okay, so yeah, so I buy cheap ones. You need a pruning saw. This is just a cheap folding pruning saw and I can put it in my back pocket and grab it out real easy. Now, this is good for everything, say, two and a half inches and smaller. If it gets bigger than that, I use a chainsaw, okay? And let me tell you, these things are sharp as a briar. Uh, you don't want to get your fingers in there as you're closing them. The next is a nice set of pole loppers. These are about two and a half feet long, okay? Now I had a set that were expandable and they expanded out to about five feet long. But the truth was when I got them expanded out like that, if I put them on a heavy limb, they bent. Uh, and then this, this fall I ran over them by accident with my tractor and that was the end of those loppers. So, I went and bought me a new new set for this spring. Of course, this is a this is a uh, Harbor Freight steel handle lopper. Okay, how good it does? Well, we'll find out trimming trees. And then I bought a pole pruner. Now I broke my pole pruner. You can go back where I um, did a review on this pole printer. A uh, pole pruner. Uh, I'll have by the time I do the review, finish the review, I will have trimmed all the trees here at College Hill Farm and be able to give you a review on how it how it did. Okay. So now, what do I want to start with? Well, I'm going to start with a plum tree. Now, I don't prune trees until they're at least five years old. The tree I'm going to prune today is seven years old, and I haven't pruned it. Uh, why haven't I pruned it at five years? Well, I just didn't. Okay, there it is. I just didn't. So, I need to prune it, and it's seven years old. It's never born a fruit. Uh, I have two plum trees that I want to bear fruit, so I'm going to give them their first pruning this year. Uh, I'm going to prune a cherry tree this year, a pear tree... Four apple trees, five, six apple trees, two uh, plum trees, and uh, uh, two more old pear, old nasty pear trees, and a and an apple tree that was here on the property when we came. That's in dire straits. I think it's toward the end of its life. It may not survive my pruning, but I don't know if I'll make a video about it or not. So let's get over here and look at this tree. Okay, here is the tree that we're gonna prune. It's a plum tree. It's about, oh, 
18 feet tall right now. And uh, one of the things you want to do is you want to consider that plum tree like it has leaves on it. And in order for these trees to do good, you have to get those leaves pulled back a little and get a little sunshine down in the tree and get some air down in the tree. So first off, I'm going to start down here at the bottom. Now, if you look right here, right there, you'll see two limbs and one is crossing the other where they rub. What's happening is those limbs will rub together and it will cause a problem. So now that one's about an inch in diameter. So I want to get those limbs out of the way. Plus you have to be able to get in there to, uh, to mow. So first off is I want to get those limbs out of the way. Now this one, the lopper can handle. Now this one right here is down in the way, so I want to get it off there too. This one right here is rubbing this larger erect limb. So I want to look at this limb and see if I want to keep it. And I think I do. So I'm going to remove that one that's uh, impeding it. Let me bring you a little closer. When you remove these limbs, you want to remove them close up here to the to the to the tree. You don't want to remove them and leave that much sticking out. You just don't want to do that. The tree will do better if you cut it close to the close to the thing here. So I'm going to take this. And Now I've cut about halfway through and I'm going to make an undercut so that the bark doesn't tear. See here, if you look right here, I don't know how well you can see that. Let's see. I well, can't see it. Oh. Right there it is. Right here. See how I've cut that? The undercut kept the bark from tearing loose. So that's the way you should remove these from the tree. Close to the close to the thing. I could have got a little closer, but that's close enough. And uh, whew, I'm out of breath. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna give you an idea of why I select what I select. First off, broken limbs, they've got to go. They need to be cut back. 
right at the tree. See this limb right here? It's got damage. Probably some kind of boring insect. That's got to go. I'll cut it back all the way back here. And that'll remove it from crossing that one. But as you look up through the canopy, you'll see that there are limbs crossing other limbs and touching everywhere. Well, anywhere there's a limb, I, that are rubbing, one of them's got to go. And I'll just put you back on the tripod and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, that's pretty much got all the limbs that are crossed or damaged. But what I want to show you, break that off. It's January and it's putting buds on. Okay, it's a little early. It's way early. Uh, happened last year. Put buds on. January. Come along February, killed them all. So, we'll see how it does this year. Uh, I went ahead and uh, removed all those limbs. Now, if you look up in there, what you see is just a tree that's got more air circulation. Air circulation is key when it comes to fruit. You don't want too much sun down in there because it'll scald your fruit, but you want air circulation. Plus, when two limbs are rubbing together, okay, like that, it creates a spot where diseases can get into your trees. Now, once you've done this, once you've done your trimming, you need to go back and pick up every limb. Let me say that again. Go back and pick up every limb and take them away from your fruit trees. That's another vector for disease. You don't want to leave those limbs laying around the bottom of your fruit tree and think, well, I'll mulch those up with my bush hog. That is not the tack to take with fruit trees. Uh, it just is uh, adding 
danger to your trees. So now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff all the time, sometimes once, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead. Now, if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.